Well, HHT community, welcome to yet another Cure HHT Facebook Live. Happy to be joining you again with a special guest, Dr. Sarah Palmer. We're so thrilled to have her here today to tell you more about tips for talking to your family about HHT and how you can become an effective family ambassador. But before we get into the content, I'd be remiss if I didn't start with June, as you might have heard, is Global HHT Awareness Month. And this year, we're so thrilled to share that we have secured our largest match in foundation history. A generous group of donors has agreed to match the first $100,000 we raise in the month of June. We have about $15,000 of match money left unused. Every dollar truly makes a difference. It's the last week in June, so time is running out to have your donation doubled. We really appreciate you considering doing so, and you can learn more at www.curehht.com.org, rather, backslash awareness. Sarah, so excited to be joined by you today. I'm sure the HHT community is familiar with you and your work as the author to Living with HHT, but thanks so much for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So before we get jump in, do you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself, your background, and the many hats you wear with the organization? Sure. So um, I am a retired psychologist. I worked as a psychologist for most of my career, and I worked with people with disabilities and chronic uh, illnesses. So um, that was what I did professionally. Um, personally, I have HHT, and I got involved with the organization um, back when I was first diagnosed, when I was about... 35, so it's been quite a few years now. Um, I uh, then became active as a volunteer because I felt very fortunate that I'd been diagnosed and helped by the foundation and wanted to do something to give back to other people. Um, and then eventually became a board member. And then because I had this professional interest in psychology and also in health in particular, um, decided at a certain point that I would uh, write this book about HHT, Living with HHT, which I have right here, if anybody hasn't seen it. Um, and uh, and so I, uh, I did that as well. So I've had a lot of different hats, volunteer, author, uh, patient, um, and board member and board president. So Worn a lot of different hats yeah. and made a lot of impact on this disease, that is for sure. You can get a copy of your um, Living with HHT book by visiting our website, curehht.org. It is a tremendous resource and will help you on the topic we're about to talk about today, which is how to talk to your family about HHT and how to become an effective family ambassador. Before we jump in, though, as we buy some people some time here, please feel free to ask questions. We want to make this as interactive as possible, and we'll try to get to all your questions as time allows. I see we have Carol joining us from England. So hello, Carol. Thanks so much for jumping on here. Uh, please feel free to tell where you're watching from. Uh, this community truly is global. Uh, there's strength in numbers. So we appreciate everybody for, for joining and watching here today. Uh, we'll start with this question, Sarah, with it being Awareness Month, and it might be a simple question, but why does continuing to fight for awareness and raising HHT awareness matter so much today? Right. So that's a great question. And I think that, um, unfortunately, even though, you know, we've been doing awareness efforts for many years and there are many HHT centers around the country, unfortunately, there's still um, a lack of awareness uh, in the general medical community about HHT. And so doctors don't recognize it and many patients don't know they have it. And the reason that awareness is so important is that it really saves lives because if people understand about the illness and they know that they have it and they get diagnosed properly, they can really prevent many of the um, life-threatening complications of HHT and have a much better quality of life and live a healthier life So, so and, um, and take care of their children better. So that's really why um, awareness is essential. Yeah, absolutely. Very well said. said. Um, and there's a lot of ways, not only this month, but all year long that our community can help us in raising awareness. I think my message to you would be never underestimate the power small acts can have. This month, you can donate to our page. Again, the next $15,000 we raise will be doubled and matched by a generous group of donors. So please consider doing so this month to truly double the impact your gift will have. 
You can go to our store and buy an HHT t-shirt and wear it around your community. You can do something as simple as sharing your story from your Facebook page. And this month makes a really great way to do that because it's relevant with it being Global HHT Awareness Month. And you can share with your friends why raising awareness for this cause and this disease matters so much to you. So we ask you to please consider doing something like that this month as well. We have a big uh, UK contingency here, it looks like, with uh, Paul joining us as well. So Carol, Paul, happy you're both able to join us here. Again, please feel free to have your questions ready for Sarah. Uh, next, Sarah, I wanted to ask a little bit. You mentioned the book, and again, everyone can get their copy at curehht.org. I'm curious if you could take us a little bit behind the scenes of the book. What led you to writing it, and, and what was that process like? Oops, we might have lost Sarah here, but we'll get her back on in a second. Um, Carol is leaving a comment here saying, I'm having a battle with my doctors, et cetera, to be referred to a center of excellence. So sorry, Sarah, to hear about your struggles. Um, your strokes certainly could be HHT related, and we'll follow up more with you in the comments here as well. Um, but please, everybody, be sure to bring your questions once we get Sarah back on. She is a tremendous resource. There are far better experts in this space than Sarah. As she mentioned, she is the author of the book. She served as a president of our board. So she's truly a tremendous resource when it comes to HHT. Looks like we also have Maria joining from Colombia. Uh, great international presence here today, and our work here at Cure HHD certainly extends beyond the United States. We're the only organization fighting globally to spread awareness, improve treatments uh, for HHT here. We'll give Sarah another minute here to jump on. But again, for those just joining us, if you haven't heard, June is Global HHT Awareness Month, and this year, we're so thrilled to share that we have secured our largest match ever. We have $15,000 in match money remaining. So please consider making a gift today to have that gift doubled by a generous group of donors. Sarah, glad you could have jumped yeah. back on here. Sorry about that. I don't know quite what happened. I just no. disappeared. <laughs> Technical difficulties. You'll hear my dog barking. We have some Wi-Fi problems. It's, yeah. uh, it's an authentic experience here. So I think you were asking me about the process of writing the book when we when we dropped off. So yeah, I was. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Um, so as I was saying earlier, I kind of got the idea to write the book because it fit both with my interest in HHT and also with my my background as a health psychologist. And I'd written other books on other um, medical conditions. So. Um, I was very interested in writing something for the layman, for the for the patient, who um, because there was a great deal of information already at that point, but a lot of it was written from kind of a scientific point of view, and I wanted to be able to translate that information so that you know ordinary people, patients could benefit from knowing uh, about HHT, what it is, how it's diagnosed, what what you need to do to get screened. Um, how to take care of yourself and so on. And then also because I was a psychologist, I wanted to include uh, some some of the mental health and quality of life issues, which had not been addressed as much up, up to that point. And it, actually there is no other book uh, about HHT for patients or doctors. There's many, many, many scientific articles, um, but, there's, but there's not a book yet. So this was the, or not a book before I did this one. So this was the, the first book. And um, so I went about uh, finding a publisher and was able to get a publisher um, through Johns Hopkins Press, which had published my other health books. They have a series. Um, and I did it as really a, a love letter to the HHC community because I didn't get paid for it. And I'm, uh, you know, basically donating uh, all of my royalties from the book. And um, and I'm, I'm very happy to do that. Um, I had a little help from some medical people. I recruited a couple of doctors to help me out with some of the sections of the book, like about brain AVMs and, and lung AVMs and some other things that I wasn't completely up to speed on. And uh, that was very helpful. And I got some, some pictures of, um, you know, uh, lung scans and brain scans and so on to include, uh, to illustrate the book. Uh, and I had a, a genetic counselor who also helped me with uh, the chapters on that. So it was a bit of a collaborative effort. Um, and it took two years to do it. Uh, it was published in 2017. So, um, you know, the book is basically 
um, accurate, I think, as far as it goes. I do encourage people to keep up to date with CureHHT website as well, because there are new things happening now that were not happening at that time, like a lot, a lot of new research in particular in clinical trials. So um, that's important to kind of supplement your knowledge as you go along and stay up to date. Absolutely. And we'll get more into that in a bit, but we really appreciate the efforts that went into writing that book. It's a love letter that I know has impacted a lot of people. And it sounds like we have a reader of your book, Paul, here in, in the comments as well. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's get into it. For those of you who are joined our community, you might have a little bit of a sneak preview about some of the content matter we're going to talk about here today, which is how to become an effective family ambassador for your family and loved ones, and how to effectively talk to your family and open the lines of communications about Cure HHD. Earlier this month, to kick off our June Awareness campaign, you might have seen this piece of paper, uh, which Sarah so kindly put together for us, outlining some tips that you might want to consider when talking to your family about HHT. If you are not signed up to receive our communications, both digital, like emails, or in print, like pamphlets like this one, please do so today. It really is a great way to ensure you're staying up to date on everything HHT related, from news to clinical trials, from new research announcements. It really does cover a wide path. But Sarah, I'll start broadly here. If I was to ask you, as an HHT family myself, uh, how would I talk to my family about HHT? What tips would, would you give? Well, so I think the first thing that many adults with HHT confront is that once they're diagnosed, they need to inform other family members because many times other family members don't know that the disease is in the family or they know they have symptoms, but they don't know really what what's causing it. So once one person has a diagnosis, they are often in sort of the hot seat of having to um, talk to their family about it. And I guess the first thing I would say is that, you know, Many families are resistant to hearing the news. And of course, that makes sense because it's scary and it's a it's a lifelong disease and it's something that feels overwhelming at first. So when you're going to talk to your family, you need to be compassionate. You need to be empathic that you know that they're scared. You know that they don't really want to hear this bad news. Um, and so you try to go and speak to them in a way that's um, that's offering them support and that's coming from a place of, um, of love and caring. So you're not hitting them over the head with it. You're saying basically, uh, I want to tell you about this disease that I have, which is now we know is genetic and we want you to be, uh, we want you to be tested for it. We want you to find out if you have it. And it's because if you do that, you know, you can prevent complications and live a healthy life. And I care about you and love you. So I want you to do that. So that's the first, that's the first step. Absolutely. An important first step. And, and you mentioned, I think, a common theme or obstacle that I think a lot of different families might face when originally diagnosed or even talking to children later in life, which is denial. What obstacles are common when talking to family and loved ones about HHT and what tips would you have for overcoming that over time? So denial is one of them, one of the big ones. And I think it's because for many people, HHT is asymptomatic. Sure. Um, until it's not. And um, many people can go years without having any symptoms and then all of a sudden have some serious complication like a brain abscess or a stroke. And so um, it's very easy to for people to, to kind of ignore something or, or not be able to believe something that they can't see or feel. Yeah. So uh, I think denial is, is a common phenomenon. But I think, again, the, the thing that I would emphasize is to... Um, to be able to point out to your family members, maybe by example and talking about your own experience, if you've already been, you know, to a center yourself or been treated and, and diagnosed is to say, you know, like the main thing here is that even though you can't see this disease, there are internal complications that can happen. They can happen suddenly without warning. But if you're willing to take the step of getting screened and finding out what's happening, then you can really prevent those problems from happening. And you can't prevent every problem from HHT, but some of the big ones you really can prevent. And, and that's where I think you, you just kind of chip away at it uh, by emphasizing the positive. 
Um, another thing that can be really helpful is, is, is coming to your family members with a very hopeful attitude and talking about having information, having resources that you give them about what's happening in the HHT community and all of the research trials that are going on now and the fact that um, there's you know, many more possibilities for treatment than there were, say, maybe people remembering their parents or their grandparents and how they might have suffered or um, had a mysterious ailment that nobody could treat. But now there are things that can be done. So I think that's important, too. Absolutely. That transitions well to my next question. Before getting to it, I see we've had a handful of, of folks jump on. We really appreciate you being with us here today. As a reminder, we're coming to you live today because it's the last week in June, which again is Global HHT Awareness Month. And this year we've secured our largest match in foundation history. We have about $15,000 in match money remaining. So we'd love to encourage the community. Every dollar makes a difference, but whatever you can give, the impact of your gift will be doubled this month. Again, through the last week of June. So there's just only a few days left to help us ensure that, that no match dollars go unused. Um, so Sarah, you talked a little bit about the importance of staying up to date uh, because HHT, we've come a long way in terms of our understanding and how we treat the disease, but it is still constantly changing as well. So in your opinion, what um, information or tips would you give to the community about how to become a family ambassador, an effective family ambassador for, for individual families. Yeah, so so in terms of being up to date, I think you know to be a family ambassador means to be able to um, tell your family about HHT, educate them, encourage them to take care of themselves and get tested, um, and set a positive example by sure. doing all of those things yourself. So. Um, having information and resources to present to your family when you're talking to them is really important because, um, you know, they don't always necessarily want to hear what you have to say, but they might be willing to read an article or, you know, listen to a, a webinar or something that they feel is more authorita authoritative than what you're saying. So you can say, well, I'm telling you, but we also have all these experts that are giving, you know, that can give you information and resources. So I would come to them with information. You can bring handouts from the website. You can refer them to the Cure HHT website. Um, you can show them the book. You can show them other resources that or articles that you've used and um, help educate them in that way. Um, another thing that sometimes gets in the way, you know, is people can get into power struggles where they feel very like frustrated that their family isn't getting tested or the family doesn't want to listen to them. And you know you there, you can feel angry and and it can be um, it can become a real power struggle, and I would caution people to try to avoid that whenever possible because that really tends to just you know get people mad and then everybody doubles down on their viewpoint and you don't get anywhere and you get into a stalemate. So I would say really try to be calm and and loving yourself and um, take your time and come prepared. Uh, to be supportive and know that, you know, your family might not listen to you the first time. They might not, they might not want to, you know, go ahead and pursue getting tested and, and screened and so on. But that um, if you can be gentle about it and you can be understanding and you can tell them, you know, they're scared or you, you understand their feelings, but this is very important to you and kind of keep emphasizing the positive, um, then you can come back and you can be persistent. And that's really important too not to be a nag, not to talk about it 24 seven, but you know, maybe every few months or at family gatherings to, to bring it up again gently and kind of see where people are at and keep, keep going because I think people do respond uh, to that persistence eventually. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Tr tremendous tips. Absolutely. It sounds like we have Nick joining us from Australia. And again, if you're just joining us here today, please feel free to ask questions to Sarah. We'll get to as many as we can. We hope to make this session as interactive as possible, as we cover tips for how you can open lines of communication with your family and become an effective family ambassador. It's truly the theme of our campaign this month is why becoming an effective family ambassador is so important. The HHT landscape is ever changing. So staying on top of the latest within this disease is so important. And a great way you can do so is again, ensuring you're subscribed to receiving our communications uh, to make sure you don't miss 
any of those updates. Sarah, we've covered obstacles. Uh, we've covered how to address denial. Uh, we've covered some things you'd recommend to become an effective family ambassador. Is there anything else you'd want to share either about how to effectively talk with your family about this disease or more broadly, any tips from the book that you think are important to emphasize here today for the community? Well, um, I talk about this in the book too, and I have some, um, you know, the book, the book also, I didn't mention this before, but the book also is based on interviews with many, many real patients whose names you know, were changed in the book, but um, there are a lot of vignettes in the book about real patients and families and, and the struggles that they've had to in, in dealing with this. Um, I think one of the other points is that families will sometimes get into uh, really feeling guilty about it. And uh, I know, for example, um, in my family, I was the first one diagnosed and then my mother was diagnosed after me because she was really asymptomatic for many, many years. Sure. Um, and, and then when she sort of found out that it was her gene, you know, <laughs> she, she was very upset that she gave me this terrible thing. Sure. Um, and other times people feel, you know, the opposite. They feel like they're going to blame somebody, you know, like it's your fault you did this or, you know, you know, if you had gotten tested sooner, you know, I wouldn't be in this mess or whatever. And I think it's really important that people recognize that, you know, a, a genetic disease is not something that anybody can can uh, just uh, wish away. And it's, it's it's really for many people something they don't even know about when they're when they're having their children. Although increasingly, fortunately, that's changing, and more people more people do know now. But in my generation, I think most of us didn't know. Um, we weren't diagnosed till we were older. So, um, so I think it's important to remember that it's a, it, it's a value neutral thing. It's a, you know, it's not something that anybody needs to feel guilty about or be blaming about. Um, but you know, it's what you got and you got to deal with it and you got to take care of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's really well said. Um, looks like we have Murel. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Joining us from Puerto Rico today, um, who sounds like. Uh, they have potentially just diagnosed with HHT, meaning three of the four uh, criteria. Um, Murel would encourage you to visit our website, email us at curehht info, uh, HHT info at curehht.org. Uh, know it can be an uncertain time, a scary time, uh, but there are a lot of resources out there, uh, us being one of them, to help you navigate that journey as well. And it looks like Carol is saying she's looking forward to, to reading your book. Um, so we got another reader here in the comments as well. So shifting away from strictly tips about talking to your family, we've talked a little bit um, about the need to stay up to date in becoming an effective family ambassador. Um, as a board member, as someone who has had the chance to attend our recent patient and scientific conferences, what would you like to say to the community in terms of kind of the state of HHT and, and what's maybe changing in recent years and what might be ahead? Yeah, um, I think that it's really um, a hopeful time. I think that um, the things that I've seen change, like even since I just came, well, certainly in my lifetime of being diagnosed, but especially even since I came on the board in 2015, we've had a, a great expansion in terms of the number of HHC centers uh, around the country um, and internationally. And we've had um, many more uh, clinical trials going on uh, of, of new drugs for HHC or repurpose, some repurposed drugs. And I think there'll be some new drugs that'll be, that are being tested now as well. Um, and um, it, we, we've had more, uh, more grant money, both for the foundation itself in terms of uh, the CCI grant, which helped us create a research roadmap and develop research priorities that are being worked on currently. And also in terms of uh, funding for the HHT centers. And then, you know, there's been many, uh, many returns on our investment in uh, seed grants for young researchers where they've been able to turn their work around into uh, bigger projects and get government funding for their own research and continue working on HHT. So there's, there's both research going on on a basic science level of looking at the mechanisms of HHT and how, for example, how AVMs are formed and, and, other, and other related subjects um, and using animal models to study um, what works with 
HHC in terms of drug treatment, um, as well as, like I said, research directly on uh, patients' responses to different drugs to prevent bleeding. Uh, and I think there's going to be more coming down the pike. We have a new research arm of the organization that's completely devoted to developing relationships with pharmaceutical companies and researchers and sort of uh, catalyzing uh, research that is, you know, what patients want, what we all want, which is working towards a cure for HHT and much better treatments in the meantime that will keep us healthier. So I think there's, you know, it's really changed a lot. We went from having like no, no drugs that were being studied to suddenly having, you know, a bunch, <laughs> five or so, I think currently being studied. Um, and, um, and so I think that, you know, that's, that's really where we've seen a lot of movement. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think the word that comes to mind to me is, is transformational. It feels like a really transformational time within the disease. Uh, I'm an HHT patient myself. I'm newer to the foundation, been here a little bit over a year, but I think um, was so fortunate to have the opportunity to travel to Portugal for our 14th annual international scientific conference. And it truly was awe-inspiring to me to see in one conference room more than 300 of the world's top doctors, researchers, scientists, all gathered in one room and knowing that contingency of people is all focusing their time, talents, and effort on this disease uh, was really an inspiring moment for myself. Yeah, I missed I missed that conference, but I was at the scientific conference the, the time before that in Puerto Rico and I had a similar experience. It's it's really quite amazing. Um, and we have you know, really dedicated, dedicated people in the field who are who are working towards helping get rid of this disease. Absolutely. So. Speaking of Portugal, it looks like we have Andrea joining us from Portugal. We appreciate you jumping on as well. We only have a few more minutes left with Sarah here. So if there are any questions out there. Now is your time. Please post those in the comments. We can see them as we're coming in. Have just a few minutes left. Again, coming to you on the final week of June Awareness Month. We have about $15,000 in unused match money remaining. So we'd like to encourage the community to give. Every dollar truly makes a difference. Um, and, and that's kind of the next question, Sarah, that I wanted to, to leave you with. As a board member, um, when we say every dollar truly makes a difference, how do those donations get Put to work. So those donations get put to work in pretty much everything that you see uh, coming out of uh, Cure HHT. So they get put to work in terms of um, helping us to start new clinical centers, HHT centers around the country, and we've expanded those greatly over the last uh, 10, 15 years. Um, they get put to use in um, funding research, um, funding training opportunities, um, creating uh, more activities that increase awareness like this one and creating all of the, the materials, the resources, the library on the website, uh, all of the educational materials that are available, the webinars, um, all the things that, uh, that enable the HHT community to educate itself. Um, we also provide education for physicians. Um, we provide education for the centers. Um, so it's really, uh, it's really, you know, a combination of, of everything that your HHT, HHT does that your dollars are being used for. And especially now, I would say um, it's crit a critical time because we are in this phase of really trying to accelerate research. And we have, um, we have a number of projects that are uh, related to that that are really important. And um, so I think you know, that's, that's where the money goes. It goes to everything that we do. Absolutely. I think that's, that's pretty well said. It looks like we have Enit, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, from Puerto Rico as well, um, who's giving a shout out to Team Jaren. I'd like to give a shout out to them as well. Yet another way you can help support awareness and advancing treatments, cures, centers of excellence, is by starting your own fundraising team. We have a little bit of a friendly competition going on. If you go to curehht.org backslash root for awareness, you can sign up as either an individual or a team, create a fundraising page, share it from your social media page, asking your family and friends to give and telling them a little bit why about supporting 
this cause and furthering awareness means so much to you. Team Jaren, this is, I think, their second year in a row competing in our fundraising competition, and we're so thankful for the difference they have made. It truly does make a difference. We appreciate everyone joining here today. We've had a great international contingency here today from Portugal, Puerto Rico, London, Australia. So it was really encouraging to see everybody jumping on here. And Sarah, before I let you go, the last question I wanted to ask uh, more broadly, if you had to leave the community with one message here today, what, what would that sound like? Well, I think the, the one message is that uh, this is really, um, I think, a time to uh, to have hope. And I think it's a time to kind of celebrate the gains that we've made so far, but also to really uh, be prepared for um, for the future and, and, and make an investment in the future. And I think that, um, you know, as we talked about getting getting the, the dollars to do the work is 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 really critical um it's, it's what we depend on it's patient donations as well as as well as grants and um but we we uh i think it's i think it's a time when we can all be very excited that we have more treatments coming down the pike than we ever did before we have more research going on we have more uh, clinical centers. We have more people, more professionals who are interested in HHT. As as Riley said, we've had these great scientific conferences with many more people than we ever had before. So I think it's really um, it's a time to be hopeful about the future, and and it's also a time to knuckle down and get the work done so we can you know get over the next hurdle. Absolutely, you have hope. We'll work on getting that work done. Every donation does help us do that work. And again, to the end of this week, the last week in June, the next $15,000 we raise will be doubled. So we really appreciate you consider making a gift this month. We also appreciate Sarah Palmer, not only for your time here today, but for all you've done for this organization over the years as a board member and writing this book and everything along the way. So thank you so much for being here today. I hope the community appreciate it as much as I did. Thanks, everybody. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.